Hey everybody and welcome back to War Budgies Fallout Wasteland Warfare episode 4? 3? What day is it? Okay, so it's episode 4 today. Episode 4 is going to be a custom scenario that I like to call the standoff. And this was written both for a fast-paced game on the tabletop or something to use in the Fallout Wasteland Warfare RPG if you need to settle a trade deal gone wrong or a hostage situation or somebody ordered the wrong cheeseburger or whatever. What it does is it pits two small groups against each other in a very short rapid fire, I know, right? Very short rapid fire shootout. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Is it going to do that all the way to the vault? I'm not sure, but after the farm, I'm just surprised that Sturgis was willing to loan us a pack of gum, much less it stop. You are in possession of Institute property and you will return it now. Hey Nora, check this guy out. It's like the most polite mugging ever. I don't know what you think we stole, but you're not getting anything from us. I was not requesting your permission. J231, initialized factory reset, Delta 25 Bravo. And with Sarah out of action, here is our survivor team for the day, Team Nora. And Nora herself, she's armed with her normal lineup for this campaign, her 10mm pistol, tire iron with a stun pack, and all that jazz. Also, since she's, had, she's seen enough crap for now, I went ahead and gave her a perk, the Gunslinger perk which allows her to re-roll a blank black die when she uses her pistol. Let's give her a little bit more, a little more punch there. Traveling with them is Sturgis's iBot, happily piping across very patriotic tunes and yammering on about somebody named John Henry Eden, whoever that is. Over here on the left side, we've got Benji. He also has seen enough crap to level up, so I gave him the bloody mess perk. If you play the game, you should know exactly what this is. In this game, however, what it means is when he removes an enemy, he can flip a luck token. And if he's lucky, if the luck side comes up, then he can put a minus two modifier on two nearby enemies, since they are horrified, disgusted, and disturbed by the shower of body parts. Otherwise, he's still got his heavy baseball bat and his pipe pistol. Dogmeat is next to him, still being awesome, still being dogmeat, still the goodest boy in the wasteland. And there you have it. And squaring up with them today is Team Also Survivor. We'll call them Team Institute for today. They're going to be led by X688, the Institute Courser. He has an Institute laser rifle and a stun baton. He also has, as his special rule, he has a perpetually operating stealth boy. And if you haven't seen this in game yet, what this means is in order to charge or attack him, by shooting or melee, you have to pass a perception check at minus four just to see him, which is terrifying. The good news is once one person passes, then he's visible for the round, but still, he's a hard guy to hit. Standing next to him is a hobo with a shotgun. They'll have a machete and a double barrel shotgun. As a reminder, these are survivors. They will have the same strong armor bonus that Nora's team does. Backing them up, in the back there with the gray, that will be a scavenger with a railway rifle. That's the thing that pins your arms to the wall in the game, if you haven't played it. And the guy out front will have a 10 millimeter pistol and a lead pipe. That will be Team Institute Survivor for the day. So here we are set up for the standoff scenario. What we've done here is we've marked off a path about blue distance wide. All the way through the board here is a road. And both forces have kind of squared off in the center, no more than red distance back from the center of the road, or the middle of the board. So the standoff scenario is relatively straightforward. The objective here is simply to bloody your opponent in the frenzied brawl that ensues from this little uh, meeting. And the way this works is over here, we got a spot for each person's team, and for every damage marker that your team puts on the other team, you get a point. So you deal one damage, 
you get one point. Deal a lot of damage, you get a lot of points. Whichever team has the most points at the end of three rounds wins. So in the standoff scenario, instead of choosing advantage normally, we have a little situation called losing your nerve. What that means is the leaders of the two teams, in this case it's Nora and X688, they will make an opposed charisma check to see who snaps first. Whoever loses the check gets, gets to act first, but they are limited to a single quick action. The winner can then follow up, and they will receive one free point for the board. Not a whole lot else to it, so we're going to get right down as people's fingers are twitching and they're going to go for their guns. Let's see who breaks first. Nora has Charisma 5. She fails. At 688 has a Charisma 4, and he makes it with a crit. So up here on the battlefield, Nora loses her nerve first. She draws and snaps off a shot with her pistol, and that will commence the battle. Start of the turn, X688 gets one point for winning the standoff. Nora will make a snapshot with her 10mm pistol at X688. Because of his perpetual stealth boy, she will need to pass a perception at minus four in order to shoot him. Perception seven down to three. She does not. The scavenger with a shotgun, making a pretty fair target assessment, will unload both barrels at dog meat. Scavenger hitting on threes. That is a miss. Second shot on threes. Hit, two extra damage, and she will stun him with the star. Base damage for a double barrel shotgun is three physical. So here's five physical against dog meets two plus two armor. He blocks three total, so he will take two. His strong armor bonus goes down to one. He takes two damage, which go into the point pool for X688 team. Benji will charge forward into the nearest scavenger and swing with his baseball bat. Hitting on threes with a green die from the charge. And he misses. Good try, Benji. In the back row there, the scavenger with a railway rifle will fire at Nora up here on the front. Hitting on threes. Miss. Second shot on threes. Still miss. Those things are a little uh, unreliable, aren't they? Our friend the Enclave Radio Drone will take a shot back there towards Railway Rifle Guy. Hitting on eights. Good hit with an extra damage. Scavenger normally has one energy armor, but X688's energy shield gives him up to two. So two armor against two damage. He takes both, but he blocks one with the strong armor. He takes one. Strong armor bonus is gone. And Nora's team gets their first point. Shooting again, still on eights. Good hit for three damage total. Three damage against two armor. He blocks one. That puts a railway rifle down to two health remaining and ties up the scoreboard. Scavenger locked here in combat with Benji. We'll pop some overdrive, which will give him plus one strength the next two rounds and a black die on this next round. Swing with his lead pipe, hitting on fives. Nope. Clean miss, but with a prepare action. And second swing on fives. Good hit. Two damage against Benji's one plus one. Benji takes one. Dogmeat will shake the stun effect as his first action. Try not to trip over Sarah. And will charge the shotgun lady. At 688, meanwhile, will draw his stun baton and move up to Tango with Nora. Hitting on fives. Nope. Good try. So the air sizzles around that near miss. Absolute bedlam breaks out here on the road. As we conclude round one, look at the scoreboard. X6 and his team are leading by a single wound as we go into turn two. Our event card for turn two is damp air. The moist air will keep the dust down, 
any green die blank face will be counted as minus one. So we'll be slightly more accurate during this. Somewhat appropriately, the next card has a flip icon to warn us. It is going to be relentless rain on the next turn, which means each model may only perform a maximum of one standard attack during its activation. That could really put a crimp in the last round of this game. Since Nora's team technically had first turn, the advantage will pass over to X688's turn. And we'll begin with the shotgun lady. We'll shoot wildly at this dog that's run up on her. Minus two for close combat, she's hitting on ones. That is a hit with an armor break. Three damage against dog meets two plus one. He only blocks one. Dog meat out of armor bonuses and down to two health. And Team Institute is up to six points. She will gamble and fire the second barrel. Hitting on ones. Clean miss. The iBot drone draws down on the railway rifle. Railway rifle, wow, that's a mouthful. And he'll try to prevent him from getting a second shot. Hitting on eights. Hit with four extra damage. God, it's gotta be right in the throat. That is five total damage. There's a bright flash, a sizzle, and this scavenger gets reduced to a little ash pile. There's two more points on the board for Nora's team, and the iBot will finish his action by charging the shotgun scavenger, just to give dog meat that extra green die here in a second. At 688 points with his stun baton, not realizing that Nora has seen a lot worse in the past couple days, and takes another swing. On fives. Not with a nine. Fives again. Man. Meanwhile, Benji's still swinging away with his baseball bat. On threes. Good hit with an armor break. One damage against one armor. One damage goes through. And by one damage goes through, I mean strong armor bonus. I keep forgetting these guys are survivors too, technically. Our lead pipe maniac will spend to prepare to retaliate before Benji can swing again. On twos. No, threes with this overdrive. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And we got Benji coming in hot on threes. Good hit, armor break and bonus damage. One armor against two damage. Takes two damage. Our lead pipe guy is the only member of Team Institute still left to act, so he will fire now. And by fire, I mean he'll fire a lead pipe at Benji's head. The black die from his overdrive has expired, but he is still hitting on fives. Nope. There's a hit with the bottle cap. I got all excited. The bottle cap doesn't even do anything on the lead pipe. Anyways, uh, two damage against one armor. Benji takes two. And it's dog meat time. So we have the dog meat special blue, yellow, green, plus a green for being outnumbered, and plus a black for charging. On sixes. Oh, that's satisfying. Two damage against two plus one. She takes one. Dog meat coming in for the second hit. Good, but two armor break. That tears clean through her armor and probably a finger or two. She's down to two health. And then finally, Nora is going to steady herself as the air is twisting and turning around his stealth boy, and she will try to pass a perception check to thwack him in the head with a tire iron. Uh, thwack is a medical term for those curious. She has to pass perception of three. She does not. Her second attack, pass perception three. Still nothing. He's just not there. At the bottom of turn two, the score is 10 to 8 in favor of Team Nora. We've got one scavenger down. Couple of people are in pretty low health here. Benji's down to one, dog meets at two. Scavenger's a little nicked and banged up. Nora and X6 actually are pretty well untouched so far. As we go into turn three, final turn. We are now under relentless rain. So once again, everybody only can spend one of their two actions on attacking but quick actions are fair game. X688's team will have advantage since they are down a model. It will begin with the lead pipe guy, trying to put down Benji. Unfortunately for him, his overdrive is now tapped out. 
So on a star icon, he will suffer from addiction. Nope, he's good. He is now hitting on fours. Nothing doing there. Second action, which there's gonna be a lot of this this turn, will be to prepare. The iBot will try a point blank laser shot into the shotgun wielding maniac. Hitting on sixes. One hit. The hobo with the shotgun has energy armor three technically since they're in close combat and XX88 is nearby. One damage against three armor and she blocks it. The drone will take a prepare action. The hobo with the shotgun really just has one shot and has to make it count. She will fire the shotgun at dog meat. Hitting on ones. Nope, good try. And that will, of course, draw reactions from both of the other two. The iBot will fire hitting on fours. Hit, one damage. One damage against armor three. And she's fine. And dog beat hitting on fours. That's a miss. Counting her blessings that both of those missed or failed to damage, she will take prepare action and get ready to take a bite from dog meat. First though, Benji's gonna try to finish this guy off and knock him into that rusty fence there. Hitting on threes. Good hit. With his heavy ability, he's gonna make that an extra damage for two damage. Two damage against armor two. Takes two damage. The lead pipe maniac will respond with his, with his prepared strike. Hitting on twos. Nope, nothing doing. Nothing else to do for his turn. Benji will take a prepare action. Probably useless. And so he'll just point his baseball bat menacingly and try not to bleed too much. Finally, X688, who has to begrudgingly respect Nora's uh, agility at this point, tries to stun her again. Hitting on fives. There's a hit with a bonus damage. Three energy damage against three plus two. Nora takes one damage. S688 will take a prepare action. Before Nora goes for the final strike, Dogmeat is going to try to finish off the hobo back here. Over to Dogmeat, hitting on sixes. Ah, oh, hard miss. We'll retaliate with her machete to have a prayer of hitting him. Hitting on fours. She hits with a bonus damage. Two damage against two armor. On a three or four, Dogmeat goes down from this. Oh, Dogmeat down. With a sharp chop, dog meat goes down. John lays on the floor and sobs uncontrollably. In absolute rage, Nora will swing her tire iron at the ghost in front of her. She will see him on a three. Ah, oh, that was so close. He retaliates on a three and misses. That will conclude turn three and the game. With a very professional frown, X688 clicks his stealth boy and disappears, leaving his scavenger mercenaries to fend for themselves. But in the fury of fighting and the horror of having to pick dog meat up off the pavement, nobody noticed that Sarah's gone. All right, tallying up the final score, this was an absolute bloodbath. Team X688 sitting here with 11 tokens. 10 wounds plus the one for winning the standoff. Nora ekes out a win with 12 wound tokens. Incredibly close, hard fought, but this is a survivor victory. Nora, survivor victory. All right, so thanks for watching. That was the standoff scenario for Fallout Wasteland Warfare. If I get around to it, I'll try to do a write up and attach it to the War Buddies Facebook page, something to that effect. Next week, our heroes are going to arrive at the vault, I promise you. It's going to be the se season finale, I guess, for this miniature five-episode season that we're doing. And then we'll look at doing more season two, three, four, whatever. As long as you guys are still entertained, I'm going to keep making videos. But we'll talk about that when it happens. Thank you. In the meantime, thanks for watching.